Please stand. Good morning. Our service begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed, blessed be, be his, his kingdom, kingdom now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living that we may come to know those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. <clears throat> 
A reading from the book of Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheep that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and all who dwell therein. For it is he who founded it upon the seas and made it firm upon the rivers of the deep. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord and who can stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure heart, who have not pledged themselves to falsehood nor sworn by what is fraud. They shall receive a blessing from the Lord and just and a just reward from the God of their salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, lift them high, O everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, lift them high, O everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. A reading from the Revelation to John. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them and they will be his peoples and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, see, I am making all things new. Also he said, write this for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. <clears throat> but some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, Already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cries with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. <clears throat> well, happy All Saints Sunday, guys. You know, All Saints falls on the, on the 1st of November. It's always the 1st of November, and we observe it on the Sunday following. So today is, is one of those times when it feels like it's really been a long time because the 1st of November was on Monday. So this is as far as we can go between the actual day of All Saints and the observance of it on a Sunday, right? So if it feels like, wow, it's been November for halfway through almost, it's because we have, almost, not quite, but we're getting there. But it's All Saints Sunday. And it's, it's, it's a strange, <clears throat> the lectionary, sometimes the wisdom in the lectionary makes you scratch your head, right? But All Saints, that day where we remember all of, us, all of those who've gone before us into the nearer presence of God, all of those who have had virtuous lives, who've shown us something that point us in some direction, that give us some way forward, all of those people, this is the day that we remember them, and the lectionary framers in their wisdom give us Lazarus. Almost seems counterintuitive, doesn't it? Right? Like we're supposed to be remembering those who've gone into the near presence of God, so let me bring somebody back out of the near presence of God. Because that makes perfect sense, and people will definitely relate with that, because that happens in our lives so often. Yeah, the, the layers of sarcasm are thick here, right? <clears throat> That's not how it works. So what are they thinking? And initially when I opened this up and looked at it, I was, that was exactly what I thought. I was like, why on year B do they do this to us? Why do they give us this lesson on All Saints? And so I, you know, I did my normal thing. I'm reading and I'm thinking. And then we had convention yesterday. We had our, we had our diocesan convention yesterday. <clears throat> Those of who were present um, were, were, were delighted to get to hear about an hour of Bishop Michael Curry, he was our keynote speaker, and it was via Zoom, and that Zoom link is now out on the diocesan website, and will get shared on, our, our, on their webpage and on Facebook, and we'll get shared on our own, and you can listen to it yourself. <clears throat> but Bishop Curry didn't talk about these lessons, he talked about what he always talks about, which is love, but at the heart of what it means to be people of God, he's right over and over again, that at the heart of what it means to be the people of God is love. Every time, you can always come back to it. And when I heard him yesterday, I went back and revisited these lessons. <clears throat> and that's what it is. That's what it is. That's what's going on in this lesson. That's why it's the All Saints lesson. That's the wisdom that we find here in this les lesson, the raising of Lazarus, on a day when we remember all of those who've gone into the near presence of our Lord. 
It's love. Now, if you know the extended story, the, the, it goes like this. Jesus gets word a few days ago that Lazarus is sick. Please come. And he waits. And he waits two whole days, and he comes, and by the time he gets to Bethany, Lazarus is dead. <clears throat> and Martha meets him out at the gate and kind of has words with him. And then Mary runs up to him, and that's where this lesson starts, and falls at his feet. And then Jesus says, where is he laid? And it's that piece in there where it says, you know, he's, he's been, where is he laid? And, and Mary questions him, and he says, haven't I told you if you believe? You'll see the glory of God. And then he says again, where is he at? And they say, well, he's over this way. Follow us, basically, right? And it's in that passage when he says, follow us. That then we get the shortest verse in the Bible where it just says, Jesus wept. He wept. He knew he was walking to the tomb to raise his friend from the dead. He knew it. He knew that was about to happen. He absolutely knew what the outcome would be. And yet, in this moment, he weeps. He weeps because he recognizes the pain and the suffering that Mary and Martha and he and everyone who loved Lazarus is experiencing. He weeps because in that moment... It doesn't matter that he's going to bring Lazarus back from the dead. Lazarus is dead. And in that moment, Jesus is in the depth of his humanity. In that moment, Jesus is where every one of us has been. In that moment, Jesus recognizes that when you love someone... When you really love them like God has created you to love them, and you are parted by death, it hurts. And it never stops hurting. It never magically goes away. It's never a day where you wake up and you go, hey, yeah, I'm over it. You get to a day where maybe it's transformed, maybe it's new, maybe it's something else, but you never get over it. And it's because we love and it's because Jesus loves that he is weeping as he walks to the grave of his friend that he's about to bring back to life. Now there's a whole theological argument here. Did he resurrect Lazarus or did he resuscitate Lazarus? And that's a different conversation, but think about that amongst yourselves. That's a fun one. <clears throat> but the truth remains that at the heart of the Lazarus story is the love of God. Because the love that God has for us when we share it with one another brings this deep sorrow when we're parted by death. It hurts. But it's also that love that compels us and moves us and inspires us and allows us to keep moving into traditions like All Saints Day. Where we recognize that those who have died that we love and see no longer didn't go away. They're still here. They're still in our lives. You've all heard me preach about my papa hundreds of times. I love that old man. He died this summer. It hurts. It still hurts. I drove to Oklahoma a few weeks ago, and I'm driving through those hills when you're going up the Indian Nation Turnpike, and he's born in West Virginia. Now, the hills in Oklahoma are nothing compared to the mountains of West Virginia, but as I'm driving through this little road and it dips a little bit and I see these hills, my grandpa gets in my mind, and I started bawling like a baby for about 90 miles, driving down the road. When Larry Manuel, every time I see that man, I pick at him and I have a good time messing with him because my grandpa taught me how to do that. Every time. When Hootie comes to our house and he hasn't been in a few days, I ask him if he's mad at us or, hey, why aren't you coming to visit us? We do something to you. Because that's what my papa did to us every single time. And there are other people in my life that I can tell you that are still alive in my life as well. And every one of you have people in your life that the love that you have for them has put their name on the list that we're going to read during the prayers of the people, but more importantly, the love that you have for them keeps them alive in your life. Their resurrection is underway in you. It didn't stop. Their life isn't over. It is changed. And it's changed into you, into us, into the way that we take that into the world with us. And the way that the love that we experience through those that we love but see no longer, the way that love for them, the way their example for us has inspired, moved, empowered us to day by day step a little bit more deeply 
into the love of God's kingdom, a little bit more deeply into who God has created us to be. All Saints Day is our way as a body of Christ. It's our way as faithful people of standing at the grave, like it says in the burial service, in the commendation at the very end of the burial service. There's an anthem that is said, and, and there's a part in there where it says, You're mortal, and I mean, you're immortal, and we're mortal, and to dust we shall return. But then there's a line where it says, But even at our grave we sing our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. We look square at the grave and we sing this song of hallelujah because we recognize that as much as this hurts, as bad as it is, as much as we wish it would be different, as much as I wish my grandpa was alive still, as much as I wish all the people in my life that have died and gone before me into the near presence of God were alive and in my life right now, we sing our song at the grave because we recognize that this is not the end, that Jesus is doing something bigger than even the grave. And we, as faithful followers of Christ, with the example of the saints that have gone before us, have the opportunity to step into that reality every single day of the rest of our lives. And when we do it, things change. And I know this to be fact, because we have millions upon millions upon millions of examples throughout human history where love has changed the world. Over and over and over again. Two very small examples I will give you, because they're on my mind, is in 1987, Princess Diana goes to the hospital that's got an AIDS ward in it, and at that time, if you remember, the AIDS epidemic was underway. It was absolutely ravaging the communities it was spreading in. People were super afraid of it, as they should have been, because it was dangerous and scary. <clears throat> people wouldn't go near folks with AIDS, they wouldn't talk with folks with AIDS because we weren't exactly sure how it was transmitted. No one knew exactly that they thought you could get it by touching folks or talking to folks or hugging folks or whatever. And Princess Diana shook a man's hand who had AIDS in the hospital with no glove or protective gear on. On purpose. People talked about that for weeks. If, it had been, if there had been internet, the entire world would have known about it in about 30 seconds. But the entire world found out about it in the weeks to come because she had the courage to step lovingly into understanding that there's a person in the physical contact of actually just shaking a hand as an expression of love that will change their life, that will give them the, the, the experience of knowing that in the worst place you could find yourself, which is in having AIDS in the middle of this epidemic, people still love you. And that single act of love that she did for one person radiated out into the world. And some would argue, because I read the article about it, that that one act of love began to change the way communities interacted with people with AIDS and began to lead the way to where now we have a, 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 a drugs and medicines and hardly hear anything about AIDS anymore because it's nearly errat not eradicated but under control. It's amazing. A more recent example was uh, 2014, I think. Was it 2014 when the nuclear plant melted down in Japan? I think it was 14. What was the name of it? That one. I can't ever say the name of it. So they have this nuclear plant. It it's, it's melts down in Japan, a very densely populated small island nation, right? You have a nuclear mess that has to be dealt with. And a group of retired veteran engineers and chemical or... or, or um, nuclear power plant employees volunteered to be the cleanup crew. Volunteered. They said, we are retired. We are of older age. If we contract cancer from this radiation, it likely will take five to six to eight to ten years to get bad enough to kill us anyway. And we don't want our younger generation to experience the horrors of being affected with nuclear radiation and developing the cancers and other sicknesses that may come out of it. So it makes sense for us to step faithfully into this work, even if it makes us sick, for the good of the people around us. What? It's mind-blowing, right? It's an act of love. It's a group of people who said the most loving thing that we can do, and maybe they didn't use this language, but their actions said the most loving thing that we can do for our brothers and our sisters is to take action in this space, in this way, in this place, because it's the best thing for them 
which ultimately makes it the best thing for us. Every single one of us have hundreds of saints in our lives, whether we recognize it or not. Today, in the prayers of the people, we remember the names of 125 of them, I think, is how many we wound up with. Larry, is that right? <clears throat> we added some. I, it was 100 when I gave the list to Larry. We'll remember the names of those 100, but never forget that in this lifetime, the examples that we have been given by those saints that have gone before us empower us, they strengthen us, they educate us, they allow us to step every day in our own lives more deeply into the reality of God's kingdom, God's grace, and God's love. And when we do that, one day, maybe even tomorrow, you never know when you might be the saint that changes somebody's life. Amen. Together, let us stand and profess our faith using the words found in the Nicene Creed on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are found on page 392 in the Book of Common Prayer. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For our companion diocese of Tohoku, Japan, and for all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For the community of Zachary, for all communities, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and the unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury. For Michael, the presiding bishop. For Morris, our bishop. James, our retired bishop. For those serving on the diocesan search committee for our 12th bishop. And for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God and his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially for Ruby, Donald, Dr. Leglu, Laura Mears, Mr. Lacey, the Kimmel family, all affected by Hurricane Ida, those with COVID, and Aaron and Penny and family, Tommy, Donnie, Alex, Carlette, 
Ricky, MacArthur, David Jane, Suzanne, Barbara, and all of those on our long-term prayer list found in our weekly newsletter. For those who serve our country and for the first responders, especially Freeman Hartley, Jude Charlet, Aaron Meese, Brian Edwards, Ethan Roussel, Jake Havard, Landon Abernathy, Dale Thomas, Tannis Grenier, Brady Carpenter, Jeremy Birch, and Hootie Freeman. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, especially for Henry Kate, Mary, Genevieve, Peggy, John, Ryan, Lindsay, and Eric, and all who are celebrating birthdays and for those who are celebrating anniversaries. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, especially for Buck and Gloria Powell, Larry Bellard, Ethel Fall, Wilma Struth, Nicole Chapman, Vera Landry, PM Landry, Gloria Landry, Lawson Calvert Morgan, Trilby Morgan. Larry Konikoff, Dan and Fran Hoffman, Wilbur and Joanne Kimmel, Ansel Dutch Kimmel, Caroline Stewart, Eleanor Sheldrick, Raymond Sheldrick, Ruth Pratt, Frida Pentec, and Charles Pentec. Jason Pentec, Daryl Logan, Ann and Al O'Brien, Alfred Grounds, Kathy Grounds, Betty Freeman, Elvin Freeman, Georgia Huckabee, Houston Huckabee, James Huckabee. Lindsay Dadama, Stuart B. Cage Sr., Eleanor Cage, Troy Lee McCoy, Sarah May McCoy, Eleanor Cage Dangerfield, Joyce Cage McKenzie, Gerald Riggins, Wanda Taylor, Melvin Cage, Stuart Cage III. Richard Wicks, Aaron Cage, Sandra McCoy, Charles McKinnon, Eugene and Helen Maliko, Robert and Bernice Hathaway, Suzanne Maliko, Charles Boyce, Mary Luca, Catherine Vernanzi. Georgia Andropont, Luella Hathaway, Dorothy Pachuda, Lawrence Stilde, Pauline Olson, Ben Olson, Athalie Hartner, G.T. Hartner, Wade Soraka, Patsy Watson. Charles Watson, James Smith, B.J. Manuel, Dorothy Manuel, T.J. Manuel, Daniel Manuel, Richie Smith, Dennis Lacaz, English Josie. James Gist, Sr., James Gist, Jr., Helen Gist, LTC Rhett, Donald Lease, Martha Lease, Richard and Helen Green, Jesse Noble Sr. and Jane Noble, Matt Hopkins, Sammy and Debbie Bagley, Sherry and Ernie Garcia. Sam, Odea, Jack, Gran, Benny, Daniel, Dale and Bitsy, Betty and Jack, Giselle Zoka, Beryl Gordy. Jean DeLon, Beryl DeLon, Steve McDaniel, Dorothy McDaniel, Alvy McDaniel, Sis Woodside, Bill Woodside, 
Patricia Boatner, Amini Boatner, Dorothy Farbra. Arthur Hergett, Mary Hergett, Lonnie Andrew Miles, Truman Daron, Dr. Howard Martin, Thelma Hergett, Patricia Mary, Patricia Mary Lytle, W.O. and Mary Parker, K. Suggs, Lonnie DuPont, Charles Abbott. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. Using the form on page 360, let's confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will, walk in your ways the glory of your name. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you of all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. Peace to those at home. Well, good morning, everybody. It's great to see everybody. Um, a couple of quick announcements. Um, I mentioned it in my sermon. Yesterday we had the diocesan convention. Um, it was a pretty low-key affair. It was all digital, so um, your delegates all met here in the parish hall along with your alternates. And <clears throat> it wasn't anything, I mean, I would normally have the delegates give a report, but we really approved the budget so the diocese can keep doing its business. We're hopeful that next year when we get to the diocese convention, we're at a place where we can actually do the convention in person again, which will allow us to have a little more business and do things in the diocese that, um, that we're all trying to do. So um, <clears throat> next Sunday is Consecration Sunday. Uh, we, for the past few weeks, we've been hearing uh, from various folks in our church talking about stewardship and giving and what those things feel like. In just a few minutes, Ms. Jean Woodside will speak to us as well. Um, next week, we're going to celebrate um, the acts and the, the, the discernment and the prayers that we all have made in these past few weeks. Moving us towards that, I would encourage everyone to please, if you're able to be present at church next week, we're going to have heavy hors d'oeuvres and, and um, some fellowship after church at the parish hall, and we will have, um, during the service itself, an opportunity for us to place our um, pledge cards in a basket so that they can be laid on the altar and blessed. If you fill out a pledge card digitally, we will have a, a, a representation of it for you that will physically go in the basket. So if you've done one physically, that's okay. Still in, encourage you to be at church next week to be a part of the celebration. And if you haven't filled one out and you want to wait until next week, we'll have pledge cards that we have a, we'll pass out at this point in time in the service next week. Uh, and you'll have an opportunity to fill them out and place them in the basket as it comes through. So um, in a few minutes, we'll, 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 we'll finish up our stewardship season with Gene. But before, so, before we finish doing that, let me finish these announcements. Um, <clears throat> we have started back our coffee hour. Um, the diocese lifted the, the mass mandate. Basically, guys, we're, the... the the, the regulations the bishop has given us now are, you know, um, we've been doing this long enough that we're not, we kind of know how to do it. So if you don't feel good, don't come to church. I mean, that's step number one, right? Like, don't come. Um, and then when we're here, you know, it doesn't make sense for us to, it's fine to high five and clap and, you know, um, shake a hand. But there's no reason for us to, you know, be sitting in each other's faces uh, and singing directly facing each other because, you know, we have plenty of room to spread out. So, you know, just do those things. Um, men's group will continue to meet for breakfast at Thursday mornings over at Jets. Um, it's usually a small group. It's usually a lot of fun. There's some other fellows from the community who are in there for breakfast. We have a good time. Um, 
Miss Tommy's always threatening me over there, so it's a lot of fun. I go over there, he tells me, tells me what I'm doing wrong, it's great. Right? <clears throat> Don't play innocent now. No. It's a good time. Huh? Oh, we know you're innocent. We know. <laughs> of communion to go, if, you're still, if you were still worshiping with us at home and you'd like to participate in communion to go, please just simply let us know uh, via email through Edgar or Beth. We'll get you on the list and we'll get you communion to go. It's really easy. We'll give you instructions then. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Do, 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 do. Birthday blessing. Well, I'm going to come back to that. Um, we were going to recognize, so I'm going to semi-do it today. We were going to recognize, and, and I'm going to do this next week more fully, but um, I don't know if you guys noticed, but we had a pumpkin patch out here. You noticed? And I was going to recognize the leadership that made that happen, but only one quarter of the leadership is here today. And so, um, Teresa Wave, that's Teresa, guys. Y'all tell Teresa, good job. Next week, we're going to make a concerted effort to maybe get everyone here. So, Teresa, thank you. Um, Edgar Cage was, was instrumental in making that happen, as well as um, everybody on the um, Church Life and Outreach team, Amanda Foote and Monica Duga, who um, hopefully we can get them all round up in here next week and we'll celebrate properly. And it will go along really well with our uh, Stewardship Consecration Sunday. So please be here for that as well. But they did a great job. Pumpkin Patch was a huge success. Um, guys, I never in my life, like they said they were going to run a, a hayride around this first little acre out here that we own back here, you know? And I was like, ooh, you're gonna make a loop on the grass, hayride, big deal. I've never in my life seen so many kids so excited about getting on a hayride. They were stoked. They were like, mama, daddy, I went on a hayride. I mean, we had kids who rode the hayride 10, 12 times in one day. So it was a lot of fun. They did a great job. Um, we will recognize them next week in a more formal way when, when hopefully we can get them all here. But thank you, Teresa, and thank you to everyone who helped participate and make that happen. Um, <clears throat> This, uh, you guys all met Lindsay Capone a few weeks ago. Um, Lindsay is our new uh, youth coordinator. I use the, worm, the term coordinator on purpose because she is, her, jo her job isn't going to be to make everything happen because we can't pay her enough to get her here enough to do that. But her job is going to be to help us keep things organized, push forward, communicate with our parents. The very first thing that we're doing is this month, November the 28th, we are going to have a movie uh, a matinee movie. Movie matinee is what we're, I think she's officially calling it. Um, at 4 o'clock on Sunday the 28th, we're going to meet over in the parish hall, all the kiddos. Uh, we're going to have popcorn and juice and those things ready for them. And we're going to watch uh, Clifford the Big Red Dog, which apparently they made a new Clifford. I don't know. I haven't seen that, but whatever. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, please tell, tell you know, if, if, you're, if, if you have kids that are here, you are invited. And if, you, um, if you're at home and you have children, they're invited as well. It'll be a good time. It's really low, low um, low commitment there guys you guys show up at four and if you want to stay and watch the movie you can if you want to drop kid, kids off you can do that too and then be back when the movie's over which I'm going to guess it's about an hour and a half long so you know there you go and then you get them home feed them and get them ready for school so there you go and then um, the bishop will be visiting in January if there's anyone who's interested in being confirmed or received into the Episcopal Church please let me know we will do the classes that are required um, we will start those um, probably in Advent which is the first Sunday at the end of this month the first Sunday of Advent is the last Sunday of November is what I was trying to say. So um, please let me know if you're interested or if you know anyone who is. And then, um, I'm sorry? Yes, our Bible study is meeting in person on Wednesdays in the parish hall now. Um, we will not meet this Wednesday because there's an installation in Baton Rouge for uh, Peter Wong as the new rector at Trinity. He's been serving as priest in charge. They're officially installing him as rector now. I hate that terminology, but that's what, that's what we call it. So um, I've been asked to participate in that. Um, it's kind of fun. He asked me if I would present him with the cannons, and I chuckled, and I said, so you having the person who's the most likely to help you break the cannons present you with the cannons. That's great. But anyway, so I'll be doing that this Wednesday. Um, Y'all are welcome to meet. Y'all can even do the Bible study if you want, but usually when I tell them I'm not coming, they decide to cancel. So um, I'm, I'm assuming we probably just won't have Bible study on this Wednesday, but we are meeting Wednesdays at 6.30s. And then before, um, before Gene speaks, uh, birthdays and anniversaries. Um, Anybody celebrating a birthday or an anniversary, please come forward. Oh, Emma just had one. Come on, Emma. You weren't here for church last Sunday, so you get prayed for this Sunday. <clears throat> Emma's birthday's on Halloween, y'all. Right? You know who else's birthday's on Halloween? Nick, Nick Saban. She said the devil. <laughs> she said the devil. That's pretty funny. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, we give you thanks for all the blessings of this life. We thank you especially for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week. We pray that you'll be with them as they start another year. Give them a sense of your love and grace wherever they may be. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon each of them now and remain with them always. Amen. Happy birthday, Emma. So before we move on to communion, Gene. Okay, I'm going to start by saying that Beth called, and I really did not want to do this. This is not something that I do well. Um, I can talk about a lot of things. This is not something that I feel comfortable talking about. Um, so, of course, what I did was I put it off until this morning, um, hence the reason I came rushing into church so late. I don't have a big story. I don't have an inspirational something to tell you about stewardship, but what I do have is a thankful heart. The Lord has always been a way maker in my life. From growing up in a faith-filled family, to not being a young couple with no money, to raising a beautiful family with all the joys and sorrows of life. Most recently, our family had to rest in the presence of our Lord and Savior as we released one of our most prized possessions my mother, from this earthly life back into the glorious life that awaited her. I went to a Lauren Daigle concert last night with my granddaughter Grace. And so I was sitting there in the concert trying to figure out what I was going to say today. And one of her songs came on that I really, really um, like, and it's called I Trust in You. And I started making notes in the concert after she was singing. And the refrain really touches deep in my heart, and it goes like this. When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move. When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through. When you don't give the answers as I cry out to you, I will trust. I will trust. I will trust in you. As I have faced the joys and the sorrows in this life, I have always trusted in the Lord. I haven't always understood each moment, but even through my frustrations, I trusted. What does this have to do with stewardship? Well, worship is when God's presence is made known. And stewardship is how I see worship. Each year I pray that I can do more to make God's presence known. I think about the blessings so generously given to me. I prayerfully ask myself, can I devote more time? Do I have a talent I can share more fully? Can I increase my giving? Has the Lord blessed me monetarily? How can I worship more fully? I'll leave you with this prayer today, the Sunday before Consecration Sunday, the day we reflect upon our worship and lay our gifts of time, talent, and money at the altar. Lord, I put my trust in you in both good times and bad. Father, I pray for your guidance and trust in me as I seek to glorify your holy name with the gifts you've given me, be it time, talent, or money. I pray to be a faithful steward as I worship to make your presence known for the love you so easily give to all of us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Gene. Um, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer A, found on page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For in the multitude of your saints you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses, that we might rejoice in their fellowship and run with endurance the race that is set before us, and together with them receive the crown of glory that never fades away. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep us all in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Good job, buddy. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep an everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. You give that to me. <laughs> the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Good job. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, be an everlasting life. The body of Christ. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep an everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep an everlasting life. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep an everlasting life. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep an everlasting life. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. I like this. You're good. Hey, that shirt looks great. Good money. Bless it. You gotta be glad here, brother. How are you doing? You doing good? Now may God bless you this day and all the days of your beautiful life in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep an everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for an everlasting life. Using the prayer at the page of top, at the top of the page 366 together, let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with spiritual food in the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia. Alleluia.